Dear friends, in the 4th century, St. Augustine was the bishop of a place called Hippo, which is um, on the Mediterranean Sea in North Africa. And Augustine was a, certainly a, a great thinking man and also a great orator. And at one point he was challenged by the idea of helping his people understand the mystery of the Trinity. He wanted to think that through. And as people do today even, when he wanted to do some thinking, he went to the seashore, in this case the Mediterranean Sea. And he's walking along the coast of the sea, and he's thinking, he's, in, he's locked in thought. And he comes across a little child. He watches the child for a minute, and he sees that the child is going over to the water, picking up some water, maybe a cup or a quart, and then going back where she had made a hole in the sand, and she was emptying the water from the sea into the sand. And he said to her, what are you doing, my child? She said, I'm going to empty the sea into this hole that I've made. And Augustine said, you, you can never do that, my child. Your hole, the hole is too small, and, and the sea is too immense. And she said to him, neither can you with your small mind comprehend the immensity of God. Interesting story. Frank Sheed, um, of Sheed and Ward Publishers in London, he had a hobby. His hobby was to talk to people about the Catholic faith. And he would often do this in Hyde Park. Hyde Park was then, this is in the 50s, but it still is today, a place where people can go and they can talk on any subject at all. They would bring with them a soapbox which would elevate them about 18 inches above the crowd and they would begin to speak. There was no guarantee anybody was going to listen to you, but you could speak. And you might get half a dozen people, and you might get a crowd of people, and you might get nobody. Sheed was able to talk to people about the Trinity and hold them for an hour in the rain. Or so it is said. And he would say something to, like this to them. Folks, you see this, you see this rain that's falling, you know that you know that it's, it's one, it's, it's, it's water. But you know that it can exist in three forms. What, what's falling is a liquid. What's falling can also be a solid when it turns to ice. And it can also be a gas when it's a vapor. In the same way, God exists in three forms. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. She was not explaining the Trinity, of course, but simply using an analogy to help people see it more clearly. He knew, as we know, that the Trinity is a mystery. Mystery is something we can never fully understand. Life is a mystery. Love is a mystery. God is a mystery. And as is the case with life and love, we are called not to understand it perfectly, but to enter into it, to embrace it, and to let it embrace us. While we will never fully understand God, we are called to enter into relationship with God, and that means relationships with three individual persons. For some years, Father Mark Link was a religion teacher at a Jesuit high school in Chicago, and He's noted for developing simple ways of helping ninth graders, tenth graders, um, to, to pray. And he would teach them this exercise, which I have modified slightly. When you pray, he would say at night, first thing you do is make the sign of the cross. Recognize that you are addressing three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then he said, think about that first person, the Father. Spend a moment addressing God the Father. God the Father is the source of all good things, as we sing in a favorite hymn. He is the one from whom all blessings flow. Review the day and thank God for the blessings of, that were part of that day. 
Secondly, think again on the day that is coming to an end, and this time reflect on what did not go well, your own sins, your own shortcomings. You address Jesus, the Redeemer, the one who takes away the sins of the world, and you ask for his forgiveness. And thirdly, he says, think about tomorrow. Reflect on the challenges of the next day in your imagination. What is going to be hard for you the next day? And you turn to the Holy Spirit, the God dwelling within us, who gives us the wisdom to know what is right and the courage to do what is good. And you ask for his help for the new day tomorrow. In this way, we see we, we, we enter into a mystery that we'll never fully understand, the mystery of the Trinity. We enter into that same mystery here at Mass as we pray to the Father, together with Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join us now as we pray the...